good morning and welcome to uh, Tooth School and this morning what we're going to talk about is our teeth and how we look after them, what do we have them for and why it's just so important for us to look after them. Now if you haven't joined me before my name is Lee, it's Lee at Throwing Smiles and I'm here to try and help you look after your teeth for life. So as you can see we've sort of got ourselves organised here this morning, I've, I've dug up stuff from about a thousand years ago that hasn't been seen for a while but you know there's occasions that this actually just works really really well so what we're going to look at first of all if I can get my background music to do what it's meant to be doing we'd be flying but of course these things never work the way you want them to which oh might be all right right anyway okay so what we're going to talk about first of all is our teeth. Now we all actually get two sets of teeth believe it or not which is really quite neat. The downside is the fact that a lot of people actually think that their first set of teeth, their baby teeth, actually don't matter. Now that is uh, one of those things I, I do get quite upset about because everybody thinks that it's these big permanent teeth that actually are the important thing. Um, the big ones that have to last your lifetime. But do you know something? If your baby teeth aren't healthy and you're not looking after them from the get-go, from the first one that appears in your mouth, do you know something? It can lead to all sorts of problems with your big second teeth. And some people end up having to wear braces and this sort of thing because their baby teeth were lost early. Why is that? Because their big second teeth need a pathway. It's like getting into your car and having a GPS signal. It's like reading the map. What happens is the permanent teeth need a flight pathway. They need to know where to come in. So what you actually have, while you actually look in your mouth, oh, let me get the light right on this, and you see teeth like this, What's going on underneath growing in your jaw is you've got your baby teeth. All these are your big second teeth and they're growing. And what happens here is these these are your little baby molars and the premolars of your big teeth actually use the roots of the baby molars to find their way. Otherwise they come up in the wrong place and that's when the orthodontists then need to think about moving them and actually finding out where they have been and getting them in some cases actually quite complex treatment to pull them into place and that makes life quite difficult for some teenagers uh, particularly when you're very conscious of your appearance and your smile so um, we're going to talk about each set of teeth so at the minute if you're primary school some of you will have baby teeth and only baby teeth so that's absolutely fine you're probably about six um, some of you will have permanent teeth so you will have all these big teeth now if i turn this upside down i am assured that it's not going to fall out but some of you will have not all but maybe most of your permanent teeth except maybe that back molar so some of you will have that so that's your big incisor going back to the, the first permanent molar and some of you will have some of both so some of you will have some baby teeth some of you will have some permanent teeth so let's have a wee look and see what these things look like so if you've got baby teeth your mouth maybe looks a bit like this okay um let me get this see if i can do this right if you are at that stage that you've got some baby teeth and some permanent teeth you might look a bit like this and this where you've got oh i've gone backwards no, oh, where have I gone to? Best laid plans and all that. Just bear with me. Right, okay. So where you've got this one here that you can actually see that there's almost two rows of teeth. That's not that unusual. So the big second teeth coming into the mouth behind those first baby incisors. And a lot of mums and dads worry about that. That is totally normal, not unusual. What happens is when those baby teeth fall out, because they will, you'll find they're probably quite wobbly, the big permanent teeth move into the space. Because you think about it, your head's not going to be the same size as it was when you were six, when you're 16. So your head grows, your jaw grows, which is what the teeth stay in, and you need more space and you need more teeth then to fill it. So sometimes it all looks a bit higgledy-piggledy, but it does get better. It does get easier, okay? So you can see this is where you've got all your permanent teeth. Let me see. 
and you can see here if I move this just up to the camera a little bit more without getting the glare on it that ultimately the end aim game is actually that you have 32 healthy permanent teeth and that's actually not that hard to achieve with a little bit of TLC from you every single day and that's the key to it all is that we're actually looking after these teeth and as I showed you in that model you can see how the jaw grows in that top image you can see a bigger head beside the little head and where those teeth are growing in the jaw so they're all going on did you know your mummy probably didn't even know that she was pregnant when your very first baby tooth started to develop in the mouth now that's something you can tell her later on and see if she knew that so let's talk about how these teeth develop and evolve so let me move you a little bit closer to me that's better okay so um when you're born usually nobody has any teeth okay but some babies actually are born with a tooth already erupted into the mouth now for mummies and daddies that can be a bit of a shock but we're all so different everything's different we're all very very unique individual people so things always are slightly different but between six months old Six months is usually around the time that very first baby tooth erupts and parents get really excited about this. But they'll often have seen the signs that this is actually starting because babies will be dribbling from maybe three, four months. They'll start putting their hands in their mouth. They'll be looking for something to chew on and they'll maybe be a little bit grumpy and a bit fidgety and you'll find that actually certain things actually ease that teasing but I'll maybe talk about that um, one day next week about teasing maybe it's more parents will need to know about that but certainly giving them something to cool to chew on really does relieve uh, teething pain so you may have a little brother or sister at home that is keeping you awake at night because they're grumpy getting your teeth so maybe uh, uh, see if you can actually rub their gums with a clean finger and actually help ease their discomfort okay so between six months and about two and a half years old all your baby teeth come in so when all your baby teeth come in oh let me see you will have 20 teeth top and bottom so you have teeth from the front all the way around to the back and when you look at them see if I can do this without dropping stuff what you will see is you've got some molars at the back and then you've got this canine at the corner and then you've got these incisors at the front so the incisors are the first ones to appear in the mouth and then over from about six months to between two and a half all these other teeth come in and quite often children getting their molars can find it quite hard but now that you're at primary school you possibly have all of these plus a big molar tooth at the very back because at around six years old what happens is you get your first permanent tooth your first second tooth um, and you know something often it is missed often mummies and daddies don't know it's there adults don't spot it at all because it comes in behind all those baby teeth so if you can see there there are the incisors that i've just shown you in the other model the case they're at the very back second tooth that's a permanent tooth that has not got to last you until you're even older than me and believe me that's a long way away so you need to look after it and sometimes that can be really hard to keep clean so that's where uh, an adult can really help keep that tooth clean at the back of the mouth because can you see if i can just get this in the light right oh this camera's back to front you can see that it's not quite just as high up as that tooth in front of the baby molar in front of it so sometimes when you're brushing you need to go back like this and then swing the toothbrush in to get in that little step down and that's why it's so important particularly you know when you're six seven and eight that an adult helps you to brush your teeth okay so what dentistry i'm going to let you into a wee secret dentists call baby teeth by letter believe it or not you know they we like to keep things simple so what happens is each baby tooth has a letter and each permanent tooth has a number okay and how they count those teeth is from this middle line so if you actually stand up straight you can look at your middle line and this is where a big line down your nose down your chin here and what we talk about is everything to one side of that everything to the other side of it and either it's on the top 
or it's on the bottom. And baby teeth are counted from here, A, B, A. And from the other side, A, B, C, D, and E. And you've got the same on the top and the same on the bottom. So everything is split into four parts in the mouth, okay? So you've got your back teeth for your molars, and if you've got your front teeth, the incisors and the canines, and A, B, C, D, and E. Now, when you get your second teeth, when you get your second teeth, what happens is they're numbered. And that means then when you go to the dentist, what you'll find is the dentist talks in that funny language and they talk about the upper right D or the upper right six or the upper left one or the lower right two. And what they're talking about is each individual tooth. So everybody in the dental team knows exactly what is being talked about. I'm going to move that up ever so slightly. So everybody in the dental team actually knows what we're talking about. So this would be the one. Now, I am very aware um, that I am looking at this, um, the camera transposes this, it's very confusing. But we talk about one, two, oh, let's go this way. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Now, there's actually eight permanent teeth in the corner, but the wisdom tooth, which is the eighth tooth in the line, it's another molar, um, it doesn't come through and it doesn't erupt into your mouth until anywhere between about 16 and 25. So you're not likely to have that yet. Some people don't even get them, okay? Some people get them and they give them problems basically for a long time because they don't actually find they've enough room to appear. But everybody has these eight teeth ideally in each corner of their mouth, okay? So you've got your baby teeth. Let me get this one. And if I can set that on top of that, you can see the baby, oh, put them both the right way around here. Right, so you've got your baby teeth and you've got your permanent teeth. And you can see that the baby teeth are actually much smaller than the permanent teeth. And that's just as well because our heads are bigger and um, our bodies, we need to have enough teeth to actually be able to get in around there. So if you actually happen to be at the dentist and you could maybe do this later on is you could actually make a dental chart. So a dental chart, for, now I've just written this by hand because all you need is a piece of paper and a pen or a pencil and just put a line, a big cross across the paper and then what you want to do is if you start at the middle, you can go A, B, C, D, E. Top and bottom, those are the baby teeth, okay? And what you can see there is there's incisors, canines and molars. And then on the permanent teeth, what you've got is, again, we've got our cross in the middle. So that's your middle, that's your middle line, okay? And then you can look and see, have I got a big second tooth? Or have I got a baby tooth? And you can number them. So your teeth, your chart, your tooth chart might look as if it's a number of letters and numbers. And depending on what age you are, whether you're 7, 8, 9, 10 or 11, you may well have, and I would expect by and large you to have um, a mixture. So you have these mixed dentitions. So you've mixed teeth. So each baby tooth is pushed out by that permanent tooth. And that's why it's so important to actually um, pay attention to when these baby teeth are fall out. If they're lost early, this poor tooth doesn't know where to go and it can get lost and as I said, it can end up in orthodontic treatment and problems with the way you bite and chew. So that is basically about the baby and the permanent teeth. Now we've talked about the numbers, the letters. So uh, what we're gonna do is have a little look now at actually why they're so important. Why bother about our teeth? Because you've got lots of them. Do you think that this is the only thing that you need to do? But say you are playing out on your bike or in the garden and you fall down and you knock this tooth out, okay? There's nothing in these permanent teeth to replace that. Once it's gone, it's gone. So it's really important that we actually look after our teeth and protect them. So if when you go back to school, you're playing a contact sport, so you might be doing playing rugby or you might be playing hockey or you might be playing, uh, you might be doing boxing, always wear a mouth guard. And that's something when you get back to things, getting back to normal, you can talk to your dentist about. But let's look at why we need each type of teeth because it would be quite handy if they were all just exactly the same. But now I have just knocked a tooth out. Let me find this tooth that I just knocked out. Oh, oh, it's going everywhere. Okay, so our incisor teeth, these teeth at the front, these incisor teeth, you can see have nice sharp edges and they're for biting 
there for biting down. So if you could imagine not having incisors and trying to bite into an apple, how difficult it would be. Okay, this is the canine tooth. And why would this be called a canine tooth? Can you think? Who else has a big, long tooth like that at the corner of their mouth? Do you have a pet? Look at your dog's teeth and see there are canine teeth for a reason because dogs have very, very big canine teeth and they're used for tearing food. So, oh, that was a bit dramatic. We've lost a tooth again. But the canine teeth are used for tearing. Then the permanent teeth has both molars, which you have in your baby teeth, and premolars. Now, the premolar teeth here, you can see they're sort of a mixture. These are the wrong way around. It's all right. There we go. That's better. You can see that the, the premolars here, one looks a bit more like a canine tooth and one looks a bit more like a molar tooth. And that's because these help the molars and the canines eat and chew. And they're really important for crushing food and making our food into a nice, Bowl so we can swallow it really easily. So if you know anybody, um, so if you're maybe FaceTiming granny or granddad or um, some other member of the family, whether it be FaceTime or Skype, or you're talking to them like, ask them, do they have all their teeth? And ask them if they've lost teeth, do they find it hard to eat certain things? So some older people will maybe have false teeth that move a little bit, that they don't crush and grind as well. So our teeth are really, really important for looking after, okay? Now, so they help us eat. What else do they help us do? What am I doing? And I'm good at this talking to help us speak now your baby teeth are really really important to make certain sounds sounds like p and b and t and d and s and if you know anybody that's lost these front teeth and their big second teeth haven't grown in ask them to say sausages because that's a hard one and sometimes you get a bit of a whistle coming out at the same time but keeping your baby teethy keep these baby teeth healthy is really important where's my lost my baby teeth keeping all these baby teeth healthy is really important for being able to eat properly because when you're little it's really important that you get lots and lots of good healthy foods to help you grow big and strong it's really important for you to actually uh, be able to speak clearly and most of us learn to speak when we're really quite young and if we lose teeth early these baby teeth early sometimes speech development can really uh, be difficult for some children and that's why it's so important to look after these baby teeth and make sure that you, they really do stay healthy so they go naturally they fall out of the mouth naturally rather than have to be extracted and it is so so important i just cannot go on about this enough that please help your mummy and daddies or adults grown-ups whoever's at home to look after your teeth at the minute because what we want to do is not to have anybody to go into hospital and have teeth taken out so what's the other thing that you need your teeth for so we need them to eat we need them to speak you also need them to look nice so smiling as i always say is contagious so smile at everybody they will smile back whether it be like this virtually or whether it be when you see somebody else in the family when when you wake up in the morning a smile will get you a smile back okay and again if your teeth go bad so if you get tooth decay and your teeth go black and sometimes that can make you very very self-conscious and you don't really want to smile but we're going to talk about tooth decay tomorrow and we're going to talk about what happens when things go wrong with our teeth and how we can actually help prevent that happening to come in later in the week so we've got lots of baby teeth we've got lots of permanent teeth it's all a bit mixed up at this point in time so as i say really important that we actually look after them our incisors are used for biting our canines let me get teeth here so our incisors at the front here and you have four of them okay so you've got one two the big two in the middle and then you've got the two of them beside each other, okay, top and bottom, okay. Then what you've got is canines, your canines at the corner, if I can put my fingers on the right teeth here. So you've got a canine here at the corner, and that's for tearing, it's for tearing. And think how wild animals tear their food. Then what you have are molars, okay, and molars are for crushing and grinding your food. And if you've just got baby teeth, 
you need these just as much let me get these the right way around without dropping them so you've got your incisors at the front and those are for biting the canines at the corner for tearing and then you've got the little molars at the back for crushing and as you're getting bigger because your head's bigger than it was when you were three or four what's going to happen is you are going to get that big big second tooth that comes in right at the back of your mouth and you can see here there it is starting to come into the back of your mouth and that's going to come in behind all your baby teeth so what i want you to do later on is go and look in your mouth see if you can find a little torch or what mommy or, or daddy or grown up in, in the house may well have a torch on their phone but i have this great little torch that makes it really easy for me to see teeth at the back of the mouth and that can say you can see count your molars and see do you have three molars in the corner or do you only have two? So as I say, I would expect anybody sort of six, seven and eight to be having much permanent tooth at the end. Some of the little incisors there. Um, but her doesn't have the tooth to fall out first. So it sneaks in at the back. So you need to look out for that. Okay. Now, what are teeth made of? Teeth are made up of different layers. So what we've got my little tooth here so we have a tooth and you can see this is like a big molar tooth and what it's got is this pink fabric is just the gum and you can see at the gum there's like a little cuff isn't there now if you look at your gums you can actually see there's a little tiny cuff just at the next of your teeth okay and what happens is this is where that plaque biofilm sticks do you remember i mentioned plaque yesterday the sticky stuff that gathers in your teeth and i've got you to scrape down the tooth so you could feel that jelly like stuff it loves to hide in that little neck of the tooth all around there so it's really important that we get our toothbrush bristles around there when we brush our teeth but let's see what's underneath teeth so let me take this apart so you have your gum okay but on the outside of the tooth it's covered by enamel and enamel is the hardest substance in your body it's harder than your bones believe it or not so you can imagine how much we must do to our teeth how much uh, how many things that we must fire at our teeth to make a hole in our teeth because enamel is so so hard now what's underneath the enamel and it makes up the most of the tooth so this is the root of the tooth and this is the crown of the tooth this is the bit that we see above the gums called the crown and then we've got the root that's underneath the gum margin here so what you've got is is this is called dentine and the dentine is much softer than the crown of the tooth so if you get a cavity if you actually get a hole that's actually made a hole right the way through the enamel and it's got to the dentine it's going to actually get bigger faster because it's much softer it's not so hard to push through so uh, un underneath the dentine the dentine covers and protects the pulp and can you see all these little wiggly bits here all these little wiggly bits are the nerves and the blood vessels in the center of your tooth okay and that keeps your tooth alive and it makes sure that your tooth um has a blood supply and a nerve supply but while the enamel doesn't really have much in the way of sense so it doesn't really feel very much because it's really quite hard the dentine can be very very sensitive and if you ask a grown-up in the house and um, if they have let me put this tooth back together oh, if i can manage this put my gums back on so if you ask a grown-up in the house if they have got any sensitive teeth or gums have a look and see if you can see that their gums have shrunk back and you can see a little bit of yellow at the neck of the teeth because that means the dentine is out in the open air and that can be really really sensitive and some some parents some grown-ups find that really really difficult to deal with and i'm going to tell you a bit more about that maybe tomorrow but time is moving on but hopefully you realize it is so important that we clean our teeth every single day and we clean them really well we clean the top the biting surface we clean the outside we clean the inside and we clean round the gum line where that plaque likes to gather and collect up there and make our teeth and gums unhealthy 
So I think it's time now for us to have our brush along. So do you want to go and brush your teeth? Or brush your teeth? Huh. Do you want to go and wash your hands first of all? If you haven't already washed your hands, remember it's 20 seconds. Happy birthday to you two times. Now then what we're going to do is so I'll just we'll brush, we'll have a wee hand washing and then we'll go and get our toothbrush and we'll get our toothpaste on our toothbrush dry and we'll brush our teeth the way we did yesterday so we'll just wash our hands first of all wash around your thumbs wash your palms wash the backs wash in between and wash the fingers now that's your 20 seconds so hopefully you've been got your hands washed you might already have washed your hands now yesterday i talked about brushing your teeth out with an electric toothbrush or a manual toothbrush now i hope you fight well what did i do with mine so today i'm going to brush my teeth with an electric toothbrush because yesterday i used a manual toothbrush and i know some of you have an electric some of you have a manual brush so what you want to do is get your dry toothbrush make try and make sure your bristles are all standing upright because when people are standing at attention when your toothbrush bristles are standing at attention they're going to do the job better when they're lying down and all splayed out they really aren't going to do the job terribly well but let's see if that's all you've got we're going to clean anyway so what you want to do is put a pea-sized blob of toothpaste and this is just to remind you oh, right way up that you're looking for toothpaste that has at least 1350 ppm of fluoride on it and i hope you all went and checked your toothpaste tube yesterday but this one is 1450 which is brilliant because it makes my teeth super strong so what you want to do is put your toothpaste just a pea-sized blob do you remember what the pea-sized blob looked like it wasn't very big okay pea-sized blob you put the toothpaste away and we'll get ready now what we're going to do we're going to split our mouths into six so that we do this really really well and really methodically so we're going to brush the back teeth from here back on the outside and the inside and the biting surfaces for one verse and then we're going to brush the front teeth the front here the outside and the inside and the edges for a second verse and then we're going to do the outside the inside and the biting surface at the top and the back for the third verse and then we're going to do it all over again on the bottom and we're going to think about feeling our teeth nice and clean so let me get the music ready and we will be off give me a second right you ready I'm brushing my teeth, I'm brushing my teeth, I'm brushing my teeth, I'm brushing my teeth, I'm growing my smile, I'm growing my smile, I'm growing my smile, I'm growing my smile. My smile is for life. My smile is get, for life. Get right up round the gum margin. And then behind My use the tooth the long now. I'm brushing my teeth. I'm brushing my teeth. I'm brushing my teeth. I'm Where have we got to? Top left. And if you've got an electric toothbrush, just set it in the tooth. The bottom of the back. You doing the inside? I'm my teeth. I'm brushing my teeth. The front ones? Oh. My smile. I'm Get right, join in the gun.
smile is for life. My smile is for life. In behind these front ones, use your toothbrush the wrong narrow way. And I, oh! My concentration, I lost track. Um, so I'm going to do the back ones again just because I haven't got there. Outside, right along the gun margin. With your electric toothbrush just set it in place so that you're not moving it. The, the bristles do the work. Now, what I want you to do is run your tongue right the way around your teeth. Feel them super smooth. Now, what I'm doing is I'm going to try and get editing the a toothbrushing demonstration on the music so that you actually have that to brush with tonight. Uh, I thought I would have got it finished yesterday, but I got tied up with other things. So anyway, run your tongue around your teeth. They should feel super clean. Now, when you've done that, you have cleaned about 70% of your tooth surfaces really really well now remember what i said yesterday after you've brushed spit the toothpaste out but don't rinse the toothpaste away let the toothpaste stay around your teeth that way that magic ingredient of fluoride which is the one that has the number makes your teeth super strong and helps prevent your teeth get cavities and that's what tooth school is all about it's having daily toothbrushing with a good fluoride toothbrush a piece of toothpaste and making sure that we actually look after our teeth at home every day because it is going to be difficult to be able to see your dentist for the next wee while so in the meantime it's up to every one of us to look after our teeth so don't forget clean teeth happy smile and smile at everyone because it is contagious Thanks for joining me this morning. I will see you tomorrow. Uh, what have we got tomorrow? I better look at my, my list. Oh, we're going to look and see tomorrow about what happens if you don't look after your teeth. So we're going to talk about what makes cavities. We're going to talk about why your gums maybe bleed. And we're going to make sure we have our brush along as well. So as I say, hopefully I'll get the brush along uh, video sorted so that you can play that at night. As I say, that's my aim today to try and get that done. And otherwise, I will see you in the morning. So thank you ever so much for joining me. I do hope that was helpful. Please feel free to make comments, good, bad or indifferent, um, below. I am trying to do this to help people help themselves and reduce the demand on our health service in the coming months. Because the biggest cause of children being admitted to hospital is for tooth decay extractions and in some cases that is 6, 9, 12, even 14 teeth. Now that is really, really worrying because our health service, uh, when children go into hospital to have teeth extracted, it means that there's theatre space, there's um, uh, consultants required who at the minute are best uh, somewhere else working uh, against this thing that we, we're all staying at home and hopefully looking after ourselves. So don't forget to brush your teeth at night. Last thing at night, and one other time in the day. You're one other time, absolutely fine with me. I will see you in the morning. And if you have any questions, please find them either on the Facebook page, drop us an email at info at Growing Smiles, or use some of the other social networking platforms because we're we're there. Websites there, go and have a look at it. There's lots of good tips for you and your family to help keep your mouth healthy in the coming months. As I say, the difficulty is, because we can't really get to the dentist just at the minute, certainly for routine care. So we all have to up our effort to make sure that we actually have healthy smiles for life. See you tomorrow. Thanks for joining me. And don't forget to make that smile contagious.